it will show live and will start. so we are live now hello friends i am mohana chatterjee project lead for the story project 9 at www.tellmeyourstory.base welcome you to the fourth episode of the dandakaranda series i am a student of history and currently pursuing my phd on the partition refugees who were rehabilitated in the dandakaranda region tell me your story calls for submission of poetry and short stories on the writing from dandakaranda today's topic is the cars terrain the a discussion on the geological aspects of dandakaranya dandakaranya as a place is quite controversial due to its geological features it is in this respect that today we are going to look deeply into the geological aspects of dandakaranya i am privileged to have with us mihir kumar shenapati this evening and i take this opportunity to introduce our esteemed speaker to the audience Mihir Kumar Shenapati is a geologist from Orissa who served the government in exploring different minerals and ore in remote forest areas of the state. In 2015, he took voluntary retirement from the government and became international mining and geology consultant, working for mineral exploration in different African countries at present. In 2021 he became the chairman of the Geological Society of India Orissa chapter I would I would now invite me he said to tell something about today's topic over you over to you sir Okay good evening everybody good evening mona good evening sir you have give, given me a you have chosen a person like me to speak something I am not a very good orator i belong to odisha i born in 1956 after that i passed my msc in geology from ravansha college katag during my childhood i was having fascination for nature during my student career i was going out crossing the river manadi at that time the katag is a river lock city and i was crossing the river beyond the river manadi there was the fertile manadi valley full of forest and full of wild animals like tiger deer and many 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 more in which the government of odisha has located a place and converted it to nandan kanan you all may be knowing that there is a famous zoo nandan kanan near bhubneswar Definitely. and i was having the fascination towards the animals trees i started my career in the forest shooting animals but later i i realized that this not a good thing killing the simple animals i left shooting and i took my camera i tr- went on shooting with my camera at that time i was also looking at the stones what these stones are how they are helpful to the mankind so i picked up the subject geology and passed the msc in 1978 and i joined the state government mining and geology department served as a geologist and coincidentally when i was serving the state government at that time during 1980 the state was not explored and we the geologists were given a scope to explore the state what kind of minerals the state is having and during that time i traveled a lot 
I travel to remote, remotest corner of of the state, and I met many tribal people because Odisha was full of forest. Even the today's capital Bhuvaneswar, it was also coming under the Rampur Reserve Forest. So after serving the government, I got the scope to visit the entire state. And coming to this Dandakaranya, this Dandakaranya word was very much attractive to me. Because you must be knowing that during Ramayana period, Ramchandra, Sita, Lakshman, they went into Dandakaranya after being exiled. And today's Dandakaranya is covering, I think, uh, four states. Part of Maharashtra, part of Chhattisgarh, part of Odisha, and part of Andhra Pradesh. Maybe the modern Telangana is having a small part added to the Dandakaranya. After this Dandakaranya project, you all know I need not explain everything. After 1960, the East Pakistanis, mostly the Bengali speaking Hindu families, were rehabilitated in the Dandakaranya area. And that Dandakaranya area is a plateau. We geologists, we term India is having several plateaus. And this Dandakaranya is also a plateau. It is very fertile. It has got importance due to its nature, due to its mythology. It has got perennial streams, lot of streams, and the deciduous sal forest. So, <clears throat> and there were also animals. That area was full of animals <coughs> prior to 1970. Today also, I marked some animals, not tigers, but deer, barking deer, and small, small animals like rabbit. The people were living very peacefully inside the dense forest. Um, almost I have came across uh, four or five tribes, the most uh, Amongst those tribes, the most primitive tribe is the Bonda tribe. The Bonda tribe, uh, they have a separate identity within the tribes of India. I'll tell you why it is unique later on. Apart from Bonda, uh, Bhumiya, Koya, Godba, and Parja, these are the major tribes. So the Bonda tribe, they are the most primitive, and their language is something separate. It is, it contains grammar. They don't have any written alphabets, but they have grammar similar to the grammar in Sanskrit. I had re read one book. It was written by uh, one driver. Can I describe the story? Yes, sir, you can. Yes. Can, sir. Huh. OK, OK, because it's very interesting. So one young fellow 
from Bhavani Patna area, which is about 150 kilometers away from Malkangiri, fled away from his house. His father was a school teacher. He didn't like the reading. So he dropped at class five and ran away, worked in a motor garage. In that garage, our government officers were coming to make their jeep repaired. So one day, during uh, the year 1975, one revenue officer came to the garage and spotted this boy. He asked the boy, will you come with me to stay in Malkangiri? You are a good boy. You know driving. So if you can join with the government, it will be good for you. Readily, that boy agreed and he joined the government service. At that time, the, the government has implemented one Bonda Development Authority to develop the Bonda tribe. That Bonda tribe, there are two types of Bondas. On the hill, on the mountain, they are called Upper Bondas. They are most primitive and most dangerous, and they never allow outsiders to enter into their area. And the lower bondas in the slope of the hill, they are peace-loving people. So this bonda, upper bonda area was under the project. And this boy, as a driver, he stayed there stayed there for 12 years. He became a friend to me when I was working. He was having a habit of writing. He has published three, four books on Bonda. He had written one dictionary. That dictionary, one day he presented me. It was named Rem Sam. In Banda language, Rem means man. Sam means the world. It was a unique dictionary. And later, that fellow was awarded with several awards. And now I don't know if he's still alive or not. So he was knowing each and every tribes. After that, I moved to the southern part of the Malkangiri area. The southern part, there is a place, uh, Gobind Pali. I remember one place is Gobind Pali. Around that Gobind Pali, we are having tin deposit, very high quality of tin ore in pegmatite. It is extending into the Bastar region because Bastar region is the adjacent district of Malkangiri. So these we all are, fall under Dandakarna, right? All this, region is, all this region is under Dandakarna, right? Bastar, yes, Malkan yes, Giri. Yes. yes, yes, all these regions belong to. So I am killing your time. No, so, no. Absolutely. So there are many stories why Malkangiri is not developed. There is a geographical reason due to the geographical setting of Malkangiri district. Previously, it was attached to the undivided Koraput, the largest district in the state of Odisha. So very lately it was given the independence. The 
you know two rivers encircle the malkangiri district one is poteru one is salemi so without crossing this two rivers people cannot go outside and there was no road connection to malkangiri there was very less connection when after 1965 when the refugees were rehabilitated only one road was constructed from jaipur to malkangiri that was the single major road till 1985 so people were afraid to visit malkangiri no road connection no hotels nothing and the climate is also very humid warm due to luxuriant vegetation and malkangiri district was left and today also it needs attention by the government by the people how the people will develop these are there are many issues only that's due to these reasons many people became supporter of the maoist they became noxels they they are not noxels but the people from andhra pradesh people from maharashtra they are coming to malkangiri and they are provoking this simple people to become maoist and when these refugees were settled down from the beginning the refugees were not in a mood to settle down in malkangiri many went away you know many went away out of the fear that this place is uh, affected by malaria mosquito there are snakes you know, the land is not uh, fertile and many many more things which are not the realistic to me only the i think the money refugees they were filtered and they stayed back in west bengal calcutta and those who were not having enough money very poor they only came to malkangiri and they were compelled to settle in the malkangiri area after being settling down they were given some land they were given house i have seen because i first reached malkangiri area in 1985 and in 85 the refugees had been provided with house land everything and they were mm, but they were not having money with them in malkangiri area there were there were was no industry no means to earn money so these people i'll tell you one thing as they were poor and poor want to have to make money by any means at that time only one bus was moving from the katak city bus stand barambadi to motu motu is the tip of orissa only one bus and i have seen in barambadi bus stand area that bus stand was the at that time it was the uh, one of the major bus stand of our state the mot the refugee girls 
women brokers were alluring them. They were coming in groups four, five, and here in Katag they were staying for two, three days, and some sex racket was going on. This was going on for several years. Only for money they were coming and they were going back. These things I admire. So, Mona, you ask me some other things. Otherwise, yes. I'll be going on explaining many, <laughs> many things. <laughs> no, no. Now let's proceed to the question answer section then. So okay. there is a huge debate that Dandakarana was on the right place for rehabilitating the Bengali refugees, mainly due to its geological aspects. So what is your opinion on this matter? Like they have said that it was uh, very unfertile. Uh, so what do you think? Was it really the case? No, it was the right spot from one angle that spot was chosen because population was less, it was full of forest and there was um, the scope of getting water from perennial streams. That's why it was selected. And it was not a wrong decision. It was a right decision. And what, so maybe, about, the, huh, what about the land, sir? Was it uh, infertile? or uh, Because many people have said that the land was arid. No, and no, not, no, 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 no. Water. No, no. Some of the lands are infertile. Because this Dandakaranya area, the Malkangiri part, that part, the rock types are granite. In, you know, metamorphic rocks? Yes, sir. Yes. Some metamorphic rocks and some are granite. In the granitic terrain, the soil profile will not become thick. So in the granitic patch area, there was no scope to grow trees. Otherwise, you can see in this Dandakaranya area, in Malkangiri, there was thick forest growth. If the soil will not be fertile, how can the forest grow? very luxuriant growth. Absolutely. So it's not true. For some people, that depends upon their luck. Some were provided with good plots and some provided with granitic area. And they were afraid to, um, for a hard labor, because at that time, no labor were available, neither they were having money with them. They were alluring the tribal people, and you know the tribal people, they behave like a king. They will never go out, and they will never work for others. Okay, so you have like really give a very insightful point. Like uh, you have what we have said that if there is if if the soil was really infertile, there would have been no forest as well. This is something really to think about because many people just label the place as very infertile, where um, no there can't be any agricultural possibilities and all. So like really a very insightful point. So now yes, now now you go and you see how they are cultivating how they are doing farming, how they are going, growing plenty of vegetables. So this point is not a valid point. Yes, sir. I have been over there. I have also noticed that like many plantations are over there currently. Yes, I you have. have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
ओके सर लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सर हैव यू नोटिस्ड एनी चेंज इन द जियोलॉजी ऑफ दंडकरन्ना ओवर द इयर्स डू यू थिंक द एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ दंडकरन्ना एज अ प्लेस हैज इंक्रीज्ड ओवर द इयर्स और पीपल आर स्टिल स्केयर्ड एंड स्केप्टिक अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर रीजन यस जियोलॉजी कैन नॉट चेंज इट इज अ परमानेंट थिंग बट थ्रू माइनिंग एक्टिविटीज we change the topography physiography through the mining activities i'll tell you in malkangiri and it also in chatisgarh area also we have many rich minerals like cassiterite the tin ore it is associated with pegmatite rock and also along with it the rare earth elements like lithium and there is good limestone deposit cement grade limestone in sunki area kotamata area we have these limestones apart from this at present also mining is going on in over limestone but over tin a company had came in 1990 hamco company from mumbai they had established a township in govindpalli area to extract the tin from the cassiterite tin ore but the not due to the noxal activities that company never succeeded and they left the place till that no companies are making venture into those area out of the fear that noxals may do harm also the noxals are doing many many damaging many things and another thing is at present the people are becoming crazy for granite they are putting granite on the floor on the wall and in malkangiri in motu area you have seen those mb villages mb 79 mb 60 like this so near the motu area there is a village peta peta that peta village has got the very good world class black granite and people are mining people are cutting blocks and that black granite is the most precious granite in india and they are exporting it to china europe and getting very high price so through this mining practice the physiography is changing and people are getting work at that time the tribals were the king and they were behaving like a king and these refugees were the servants they were cleaning the homes of the tribals and they they were serving them but now it has been reversed the tribals are the servants to the refugees you must have was that only the refugees are having two story three story building they are having their shops everything but these tribals are still working for them so the refugees standard has gone up but the tribal standard are uh, not got down but it, it is it it is the same like that it was before 
so the physiography is changing due to mining practice the roads are being developed for transporting the minerals and industries are coming into malkangiri area many things malkangiri will develop one day and the east pakistani people now they feel that they are the lucky people oh, another thing i to tell you that tribe bhumi uh, bhumiyar bhumiyar there is a tribe bhumiyar in malkangiri that tribe was uh, before 200 300 years ago that tribe was staying in chatisgarh area but when there was a great famine and they migrated to malkangiri so if the malkangiri was in fertile if the malkangiri was not having water to cater for the people so why these bhumiyars they came they migrated to malkangiri absolutely sir you have like raised a very valid point Uh, so now let's move on to the next question sir can you shed uh, sh- shed some light on the various tribal groups living in dandakaranya how do they normally react to the changing world beside them like you have already said that they previously they used to behave like kings and now they have been converted into a very menial position so how are they behaving to this change okay <clears throat> they had to be they had to be changed and they have changed prior to 1998 most of the tribes backward tribes like banda koya they were not in a habit of wearing clothes they were staying naked but they have changed one plus point i mark when these east pakistani refugees arrived they were much more advanced than the tribe they they were knowing about the world and they taught this tribe many things these tribes were staying like animals exactly they they were similar to animals but these refugees that taught these people many things because language was a barrier was a great barrier and there was no treatment medicine neither the government doctors were going into the malkangiri area these east pakistani people they were having knowledge of homeopathy i don't know you have marked it or not because in every model village there you can mark one or two homeopathy stall yes sir i have noticed and they treated the local tribals with homeopathy that was a earning for them and no they were having no conflict because of less population the tribals accepted them the tribal the never reacted that these people are come from outside they had never reacted and now also they are not in a mood to react rather some of the refugees they are exploiting the tribal and these tribals they don't have the knowledge to assess the um, refugees that they are treating us like 
they are exploiting us and it is a balance and they are also supporting the refugees one or two from the refugees have become mla ministers so there is no conflict in malkangiri area and i think in other parts also the in chatisgarh or maharashtra there there is no conflict they have accepted the refugees like they haven't treated them as enemies coming from outside they have treated them as their own right the tribals yes yes, yes. sir you have worked in various african so uh, tribal societies as well so in your opinion what are the similarities and differences between these african or uh, tribal societies and the tribals <laughs> of dandakaranya <laughs> yes yes uh, similarities almost 80% because here the people our tribal people that mm, they don't wear clothes they are also the tribal people they don't wear clothes here the tribes they love rice they are also the same thing and coming to the cultural aspect here also the tribe they give freedom to the females women folk the the girl can choose his groom that is his, that is a liberty in africa the same thing in africa one tribal girl can go on marrying several boys will divorce one again will go for second third and hear the same thing no difference only the difference is also i have marked the bonda people they are also they are mostly they are strongly built people and they are similar to african people and another thing the physiological part our tribes they grow hair in their head like us but in african tribe there they don't have good hair like us you must have seen they will grow spring like hair right and many many things are similar africans are more uh, like animals here our tribal people are like animals but no, 20% less they eat everything in africa here they don't eat monkey don't eat man human beings these are the in africa they eat man as well they eat, eat everything gorilla chimpanzee everything that moves snake okay. everything they are very fond of flesh meat okay human as well they eat human beings as well <laughs> yes okay yes there are a lot of similarity because here it is a forest there also forest no difference if i'll take you blindfolded and i'll drop you in africa tribe area you may say that yes it is also dandakaran okay. so so much is the similarity yes yes okay sir like really you have given a very nice point to think about like uh, what you are saying like when we civilize in a different way our tribes are of, obviously they are also civilized in a different way but our 
so called civilized society our differences is like uh, expand much more because uh, normal indian and uh, african they will have very less similarity com uh, compared to their socio cultural habits but uh, the tribal societies they like they are still the same they still have that unity in them right right we have changed under the influence of our european ruler but tribal society is the primitive society they haven't changed okay sir thank you so much now let's move on to the next question sir under the dandakarana project various irrigation works were initiated into the dandakarana region do you think this irrigation project helped the common peasants in any way yes it is a good question government is trying to put up irrigation projects because the geological setup of dandakarana area is such that retention of ground water is very less there should be some impervious layer like clay if you are not having one impervious layer the rain water which is being seeped into the earth it will go down and it will vanish and water table will not be created in dandakarana area this is a problem due to the geological setup still then government is trying to build up some aqueduct dams and other reservoirs but how to transport the water to different places because the government is not having sufficient money to make a concrete canal always you must have seen that you know, in most of the areas in india the canals flow over the earth and again due to due to different joints fractures and lack of impervious layer clay layer the water is percolating down when suppose 100 gallons will be discharged from the source point and after 5 10 kilometers you will be getting 2 3 gallons all the water will trickle down through the fractures joints and water holding capacity of the area is very poor so that is a that is creating a major problem still then our scientists are geologists scientists engineers they are studying it how to tackle the problem how to distribute the water without loss and sir, at present think... yes no sir you complete first then i will ask yes the um, i'll say the irrigation is not adequate not adequate, not adequate. so do you think the, uh, these features uh, maybe the bengali refugees they may, uh, might have misunderstood this uh, water retention capability of the soil to what uh, to soil for infertility do you think th there is a possibility like what they thought that the soil is infertile maybe this was the actual issue that their crops were failing and uh, they have uh, mi misunderstood on this part and they have labeled the soil as infertile yes the is actual issue was tree felling due to tree felling when the dandakarana area was cleared that was uh, under the thick forest growth when large forest area was denuded to rarely let these people automatically there was a disbalance in the climatic condition as well as the soil 
was deteriorated. Some areas were having sandy soils in the Nakaranya area. Gradually, most of the area became sandy, which, which is not fit for agriculture. This is the major effect of rehabilitation. I mean the bad effect, deforestation and deterioration of the soil quality. And what about rainfall, sir? Uh, does the place receive adequate rainfall? Yes, yes, yes. So to, today they are suffering. You must have seen in the news due to severe rainfall, the southern part of Malkangiri district, these um, model villages, 6, 11, they are under water. And the Godavari project, Polavaram project of Andhra Pradesh is creating a major role in creation of flood. Many people have labeled it as arid. Do you think there is anything arid uh, in, the, in the undercurrent with the climate and weather? They have called it an arid place. Like, Sorry, you can you repeat? Uh, many people have labeled the place as arid. Like there is a very uh, absence of humidity over there. Do you think uh, there is uh, any possibility of such? It, was the place really arid? No, 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 no. No, the area is not arid. Rather, I will say it is humid. During your tour, have you seen arid area only during winter months? Two, three months, the climate become less humid. Okay. But it is not true. Not true. The climate is good. I'm getting it is your better point. than uh, your Calcutta and Bhuvaneswar climate. Far yes, more better. The, I have been over there in winter, so that time uh, I, may, I might have not felt like the humidity because of it. As you said, in, in the winter <laughs> season, it's uh, so because I have heard that it's a very hot place. So I have been over there in, in winter season. Yes, not exactly hot. It is humid, humid place. Mm -hmm. Getting your you will be sweating. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. So now the next question is the rehabilitation program of Bengali refugees in Dandakaranna under Project Dandakaranna brought many changes into this place. What do you think are the major changes that took place in Dandakaranna as a result of this project? Over to you, sir. Yes. The first change is the local tribal people became civilized. They, they were treated with homeopathy medicine. So these are the changes. And how to lead a hygienic and good lifestyle. These were these are were taught by the refugees and also the refugees um, taught them with many small small uh, what do you say uh, this making of um, making small articles, household articles that taught these people. They exposed these people to the rest of the world. And these are the plus points. And negative points are as these people 
don't know anything about the land system. So some refugees grab their land and they, with very small money, they took away their land. And due to this land uh, transfer system, some conflict may arise in the future. May arise. Sir, right now it, there is that law that you cannot buy a tribal land, like a refugee uh, person or anyone from outside cannot buy uh, uh, the lands uh, that are allocated to the tribals. So, how do you think like uh, this unfolded? Like, uh, the, no, the, that, have this have this system yeah. provided any protection to them to the tribal? Yes, yes, that is a law. But if you are not a tribe, you will purchase a land in the name of your friend who is a tribe. Nobody will restrict you. And your tribal friend, he will appeal the district magistrate that uh, I need money. That's why I may be allowed to sell my land. With the permission, he can sell his land. So there are several means. So which means are known people are ac actually taking advantage of the loopholes in the laws, right? Yes, 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 yes. Not exactly loopholes, because in many cases, you the tribal person need to sell his land. Without selling, how can we are selling our land in the a time of our distress. So similarly, the one tribal person may sell his land during his distress condition. And uh, sir, as the Beng there are al also many Bengali refugees and their families are also expanding. So they also need land. Or, so uh, how, what is the land ratio that is being allocated for, or reserved for the tri tri tribals and that are uh, left as the common lands? Like, are there adequate lands for the for these Bengali refugees for their expanding families? Yes, yes, there are adequate land. There are adequate land. That is not like reserved for the tri tribals, right? Like land. No, that are no, no. Okay, because I when I was over there, I have heard this complaint from many Bengali families. Like our uh, family are increasing. Uh, we are previously we have two kids. Now our two kids are having four kids, and like this, they are, we are ex our whole family is expanding. But there is this issue with us that we cannot go beyond this particular land. So that is a problem they are also facing. So. Uh, I was thinking about the ratio, like, uh, are they also, like, feeling any kind of difficulty to, like, fit in over there in the limited space that is being allocated to them? Like, uh, what's your opinion on this? <laughs> over this issue, uh, I cannot give you my opinion because I have not uh, sure about the issue. Okay, sir. No problem. So now let's proceed to the last question of today. Sir, with the rehabilitation of Bengali refugees in Dandakarana, the question of their cultural conflict with the indigenous tribals also arises. How do you think this uh, tribal refugee relationship unfolded in respect to Dandakarana? Over to you, sir. Now, there is no conflict between the refugees' cultural uh, habit. The, they never interfere into others. When they you never fought for cultural supremacy, like uh, what happened normally is like uh, one person comes from outside and there are already settled people. They started fighting for the their to prove that our culture is, is superior to yours. And tribal people, they also had their own culture. And so does the refugees. So uh, was there any like conflict like they tried to prove to each other that I am the supreme one and you are the subordinate, something like this? No, no, no. No, 
because as we we observe our cultural habits are different from the tribal people here also in other parts of orissa we are having many tribal people and lot of tribal population because you know one third of odisha is dominated by the tribal population so they practice their habits and we the general caste people we practice our habits and there is no conflict among the general people and tribal people it is similar for the refugees they practice their habits the tribes they practice their habit they will invite each other and they will enjoy nobody interferes into other habit it is not a problem thank you so much sir like you have given a really beautiful insight into the life of the people who are currently living in dandakaranya and how it is like we have read about it but today we have heard from the like men who have lived over there for years and it was really a very like inspiring and exciting stories we have heard from you so now i would like to formally thank you and conclude the session so okay. i'd like to thank mihir uh, sir for the very insightful conversation and for his time this evening tell me your story calls for submission of poetry and short stories on the writing from dandekaranya we will return with our next panel discussion very soon till then stay well stay safe stay happy and good night thank you thank you very thank much you. mona good night thank you sir good night